Prize Fight Muay Man Pan Extreme. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fatex Fight Muay Man Pan Extreme. สวัสดีครับขอต้อนรับทุกท่านเข้าสู่รายการ Fatex Fight. มวยมันพันเอสตรีมพบกันทุกวันเสาร์ตั้งแต่เวลา10โมงเช้าถึงเที่ยงวันทางช่อง7 HD ครับท่านผู้ชมครับวันนี้เรามีทั้งหมด7คู่ที่จะขึ้นมาชกบนเวทีนี้ครับจะเป็นมวย3ยกทั้งหมดเลยนะครับโดยที่มีนักกีฬาจากหลายประเทศมากๆเลยนะครับสิงคโปร์บราซิลลาวจอร์เจียกรีซและแน่นอนครับจากประเทศไทยคู่เอกในวันนี้นะครับจะเป็นคู่ที่6นะครับโทพิกอับดุลเลบจากประเทศจอร์เจียปะทะอาพิสิทธิ์แฟร์เท็กซ์จากประเทศไทยและอย่าลืมด้วยนะครับว่าวันนี้ใครที่ชนะด้วยน็อกก็จะได้รับโบนัสจาก Fair Tech Equipment 10,000 บาท Ladies and gentlemen we have a total of seven bouts lined up for you here at Fair Tech Fight We have fighters from Singapore, Brazil, Laos, Georgia, Greece and of course Thailand and in our main event which will be the sixth bout Topic a b d u l a e from Georgia will take on a p i s i t f a i r t e x from Thailand. Also, any fighter winning by knockout today will get a bonus from f a i r t e x e q u i p m e n t of 10,000 baht. For those of you who'd like to listen to commentary in English, you can do so by changing the language on your remote on Channel 7 HD or tune into our YouTube channel at f a i r t e x Fight. สำหรับท่านใดที่อยากจะชมออนไลน์นะครับเรามีอยู่2ช่องทางด้วยกันครับ YouTube และ Facebook ช่อง t e r r o Digital และช่อง f a i r t e x Fight. เราจะพักกันสักครู่กลับมากับคู่เปิดเวทีครับจะเป็นคู่มวยหญิงครับพิกัด48กิโลกรัม Join us after the break with our opening bout in female Muay Thai at 48 kilograms. Don't go anywhere. Vertex Fight Muay Man p a n Extreme. สมโอทีดีผู้มีสิงแอลคาริทีและสมสกัดลายดีไซน์เจนท์เมนวอลกัมแบ็กทูเฟตเอ็กซ์ไฟท์มวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมที่ที่ไอคอนิกลุมบินีสเตเดียมออนช่อง7 HD 
คู่เปิดเวทีในวันนี้ครับจะเป็นคู่มวยหญิงพิกัด48กิโลกรัม Let's bring out the fighter for opening bout in the black corner ท่านเชิญยวนฮัลโหลวอร์ลด์และวัลกัมทูลุมพินีสเตเดียมเดอะเพคเกอร์มวยไทยเดอะมาสันสแควร์การ์เด้นของตะวันตกแอสวิกเกตอันเดอร์เวย์ที่นี่ทุกวันนี้ของแฟร์เท็กซ์บิทและเราเข้าเข้าไปในริงทันจุนยุนหรือเอ็กซ์วายเข้ามาจากสิงคโปร์ที่เอ็มเนนเอร์ทิมอยู่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่A good technical fighter, X Y. She's been fighting for a number of years. I believe it's been maybe six or seven years. It's been a long time. I mean, I think both of us have trained with her, right? Yeah, she. Yeah. She came over to Thailand maybe uh, six years ago while I was still working at FA Group and trained over there for a hot minute. Obviously, based in Singapore, where she works as a. Personal trainer. So we turn it over to Mark Abbott. And in the red corner, let's bring out Kathi Sit Putson. Here we are in the red corner at age 17. Kathi Sit Putson representing Thailand. She stands. At 153 centimeters, with a fight record of 35 fights, 29 wins, five losses, and one draw. So, of course, representing Sit Putson, Putson Jim. So, quite an experienced customer here at 17 years old. Not uncommon for Thai athletes to be this experienced with 30, 40 fights in their teen years, often fighting out in the provinces of Thailand regularly, perhaps once every two weeks, even as regularly as once every week. So we'll see what Kathy Siputson brings here this morning. The opening bout is in Muay Thai at 48 kilograms, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. n a m u i Nei m u m d a m fighting in the black corner. n a m n a k 48 kilograms, 156. Weighing in at 48 kilograms, standing 156 centimeters tall. m a d a k r e d Singapore. From Singapore. And her opponent, fighting in the right corner, number 48 kilograms, 156. Weighing in at 48 kilograms, standing 153 centimeters tall. มาจากประเทศไทย from Thailand. This is g a t h i Sit Put Son. And your referee, p a n t o y i n g Nisha p o n Niem c h o t i k u n Here we have the tail of the tape as Kati Sip Put Son takes on Tan XY from Singapore. Oh, again, the Singaporean athlete looked a little nervous there in the corner. What do you think, Joe? Might just be a case of shaking off the nerves, a bit of rust. I think she hasn't fought for a little while. Haven't seen her fight for a while on the socials, so it'd be interesting to see because she's definitely a technical customer. Having sparred with her, she nearly hot, knocked me out with a head kick in sparring <laughs> once. <laughs> yeah, well, and the head kick coming in high from Kati. Oh, good high kick there from XY Tan from Singapore. Good leg kick as well. Just go. Going for the leg there as well, doubling it up. Kati just trying to find her rhythm. Very tit for tat here in the first round. 
big left kick there from XY. She just edges forward. Nice rear hand there. Katty, Katty sitting on the back foot now. Both fighters starting off a little bit slow. Some nice kick exchanges here. Very tip for tap. Oh, Katty. Engaging in the point on that last exchange there, finishing up with a kick. Nice leg teep there from XY. XY definitely looks very fit. You can see a lot more musculature on her, and just the body fat ratio looks a little bit lower. Again, working as a personal trainer. And I think starting to overpower Gatti now. Oh, good kick though from the Thai athlete. Still very dangerous. Some of those stabbing knees there from XY probably causing a bit of damage. I think you're right, Matt. You can just see Katy starting to fade in the power output there. Oh, big rear kick there from Katy though. Don't want to talk, speak too, too soon. Doubling up there with the rear kick as well. A little Good. off balance there from XY. And you see her continuing to attack the legs, the Singaporean athlete. I think it's smart moves from her. And it's great to see athletes like Kati and XY here in the ring. You know, smaller athletes that don't necessarily get a massive chance to shine. And doing very, very well. So up into the clinch now as they get separated. Just locking up back in the center ring. Moving forward, doubling up with that left kick of XY. Just putting the palm out. I think she was about to follow up with that left rear. Good defense there from XY. Though Katy found the shot there with that last kick. Again, attacking the leg there, XY. So very active round there from both female athletes in the first round. What did you take away from that, Matt? I liked the Katy's sense of timing. I think she has very good fundamentals. I'm a little concerned about her conditioning, though. I think that XY, the Singaporean athlete, just seems to have a bit more gusto to her, a bit more oomph. And here it is in some of the replays. Nice one, two there from XY. Great off-balancing kick, though, from Kati. You see a perfect body kick there from Kati. One of the things I did notice is Kati was just scoring on the end of a lot of those exchanges. Just on some of the uh, kick exchanges, she would just end, end them. So she might have just edged that round out, in my opinion, just on the end of the kick, kick exchanges. Though I think you are right. I think XY will probably come back with the fitness and the tenacity here in the second round. So. We'll see what round two brings us here at Fairtex Fight. Something that a lot of experts in the sport are saying that the foreign fighters come in a lot more fit. And now the level of foreign fighters is going up and it's causing a fair amount of concern for the future of Thai athletes. But beautiful body kicks here from Kati. Great sense of timing. Uh, the XY is doing a good job of moving forward as she she's not quite marching, just edging forward, but using good defense as well. Though, oh, uh, she is eating a lot. Yeah, but XY is still attacking the legs, and I feel like Kati is wincing even when she's blocking these leg kicks. Oh, good one too. On the inside of that leg. Two, peppering it. Mm. Big left kick there from Katy, doubling mm. up. You notice as soon as she ch throws that left kick, XY goes for the inside of it, just peppering it. Yeah, it's a great way to stop a fighter from kicking as much if they know they're going to be punished. 
the other thing is XY is attacking hard with the hands as well. Uh, you can see that the leg kicks are starting to take a bit of damage because she starts to sit on it a bit lighter now. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of off-balancing now when XY lands that leg kick. And she's a bit hesitant to stay in the normal stance, too. You can see the footwork changing up a little bit. Right. XY is utilizing a pretty classic Moy Mat style here, a heavy-handed leg kicker versus a more Moy Day or kicking fighter, which is Gatti. Nice redirection there from XY. Hook to left to kick. Big teep there from Katy, who's on the defense now. I think this is a bit of a race to see how long Katy's base can stand. How many leg kicks she can take versus how many body kicks she can deliver. Great body kick there from Katy. XY just looking for the timing to find that leg kick. Set it up with some straight hands. Just pushing forward, trying to get Katy in the pocket where she wants her. I would like to see XY block some of these kicks a bit more. She's just eating them. She answers back strongly with the hands. Again, there's a kick. She sort of tried to sweep it out of the way. A very, very good second round and an entertaining opening bout for our show. Do you have this one swaying one way or the other, Joe? I think I'm going to throw it again, just edging it out there by... Oh, no, not again. I'm going to change change my, 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 uh, my approach here. I'm going to give it to XY just on the volume. The volume of attack she threw that round. Well, volume is important. I think what's even more important is damage and effective damage. Do you think that the volume of XY was doing more significant damage? I do, I do, I do. I think that front leg of Katy is really starting to hurt because I could see here in the corner now that the trainer was starting to rub it. So we'll see what round three brings us in our first bout this morning here at Fairtex Fight. And obviously a lot on the line for both of these athletes as Fairtex Fight is a building show for the future of Muay Thai athletes. A lot of the athletes here at Fairtex Fight move on to move on to shows like One Lumpini and One Championship. This is where you get noticed. Katy on the back foot there. Yeah, and the way she's walking, you see that front leg sort of collapse in and she moves to the side. I think this is a pretty sure sign that front leg is damaged, but doing a magnificent job defending against XY. Yeah, some very high-level footwork there from Katy. Yeah, even though that front leg is damaged, she's doing a good job maintaining her distance. I think if this was a five-rounder, we would probably see a, a stoppage in the fourth. Though we may see that in this third round. Well, if that happens, I predict that XY will get the win. But Katy is doing a great job controlling the game here. Nope. Nice very left kick Very effective there. kicks from Kati. As XY continues to press Ooh. forward. Yeah, and a hard right hand there from the Singaporean. Nice little elbow from that dump as well. Top. Slipping on the inside of the clinch. Parry down. Straight into the clinch again. Bit of a stalemate there as our referee brings them back into center circle. 
Nice. Big tape. Mm. I definitely feel that Katy is showing more signs of fatigue and wear and tear, whereas XY looks like she could run a marathon. Continuing to march forward, try to go for that leg again. Oh, great push kick there from XY. Not just using it defensively, but offensively as well. Yeah, Katy is just looking like she's defensive here. This is what happened feeling the latter part of the second round as well. Yeah, she's just in survival mode at the moment. And I think that she's going to survive this round. I would agree with that. She continues to sit on the back foot and fire off that left kick. I think her early defensive maneuvers against XY have paid off. Back to the leg kick. You can see that one hurt. She's starting to stumble now. Almost landing that last one. And it's the last few seconds here. Honestly, I think if this went on five rounds, we would have seen a stoppage from that leg kick. Yeah, oof. Another leg kick there from XY. And what a phenomenal performance by both athletes. What a fantastic fight. Some great defense there by Cathy, sitting on the back foot, firing off that left kick. And great effective aggression there from XY from Singapore. Here's some of the highlights. Great right body kick there from Kati. And I actually felt in the clinch they were pretty evenly matched. XY opening up with a few elbows as well. What's your prediction on this one, Joe? Oh, it's, it's always pretty tough to, to call these ones because I think her... Katy's defense on the back foot was pretty good, like it was pretty high level. So sometimes the judges can call it just based on scoring the points from that left kick. I'm just gonna have to wait and see. Ladies and gentlemen, after the completion of all three rounds, we go to the judges scorecards. All three judges score this about 29-28. 29-28. For the winner, in the red corner, got he sit puts on. A fantastic opening bout here in female Muay Thai Lumpini Stadium. Roger Pakan to crew club ma chuang na ku to pai ko pen ku muay ying chen kan krapi kat 53 kilogram. Join us after the break with some more female Muay Thai action at 53 kilograms. See you after the break. Rare Tech's fight, Muay Man Pan Extreme. Gentlemen, welcome back to Fairtex Fight, Moe Man Pan Extreme, here at the world famous Lumbini Stadium on Channel 7 HD. Pan Bell Cup, Ning Ku Krop Yok, Yalim Hapwa, Nak Chok Ti, Chanat Ruin, Nok Nevani Krop, Jerei Rap Bonas Jack, Fairtex Equipment, Ning Moon Balin Hap. We are down one fight which went the distance as we move into our second bout. Let's bring out the fighter in the black corner, Jiti Saw Saw Chiang Mai. Here we go into our second bout of the day as Chiti Soso Cheng Mai enters the ring. The 21-year-old stands at 170 centimeters, 
59 bouts to a record, 43 wins, 15 losses, one draw. Did he, coming from the north of Thailand, Chiang Mai, there was a very large female Muay Thai scene in Chiang Mai. A lot of the vocational schools up there have programs for fighters, so a lot of good, solid female fighters from up there. But now more female fighters from around Thailand getting opportunities because of shows like Fairtex Fight. The athletes, of course, getting paid more as well. The upcountry shows, you might make three to 5,000 baht maybe, and here, more like 10,000 baht, eight to 10. in Vertex. Representing Vertex Training Center in Patia is Petwarin Vertex. Standing at 165 centimeters, Petwarin has a fight record of 17 fights, 14 wins, two losses, and one draw. Of course, we've seen Petrin fight here quite often. Quite a strong customer there from Fairtex. Very strong forward, Moy Borg style. If uh, you don't know what that is, it means pretty much a forward aggressor, strong punches, never stops. Of course, another more famous Moy Boak fighter is Sexan or Quan Muang. So very similar style, just never stopping, putting continuous, unrelenting forward pressure on her opponents. So I'm excited to see Pet in fight again today. <laughs> This is a Muay Thai bout at 53 kilograms, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Namwe Ne Mum Nam fighting in the black corner. Namnak 53 kilograms, sung Roy Hok Sipjet. Weighing in at 53 kilograms, standing 167 centimeters tall. Maja Prathet Thai from Thailand. This is Jitpi Sa Sa Chiang Mai. And her opponent fighting in the right corner. Namnak 53 kilograms, sung Roy Jetsip. Weighing in at 53 kilograms, standing 170 centimeters tall. Majak Pratatai. Also from Thailand, this is Petwarin Vertex. And your referee, Wacharapon Ratum Chai. Here is a tale of the tape, Pet we're in Fairtex versus Chidi Sosor Chiang Mai. And this should be a good one. Of course, a referee in the ring, Fawn, a former pro boxer who did a lot of Western boxing during her athletic career. Now a referee here at Lumpini, works regularly here at Fairtex Fight and also on Juan Lumpini, so great to see just the opportunities for female athletes, both as fighters and then as officials. We have female promoters and in other important roles around the sport. But here we are, round one. And I think I called it pet we're in <laughs> on the forward early on. Nice high guard there. And Mr. Wong, the owner and founder of Fairtex, has referred to Pet Warren as a younger Smilla Sundown. Just has that machine-like tenacity to her. Big right stabbing knee, piercing straight through the midsection of Jitty. You can see a look at determination and focus there from Petwarin. 
Big right kick there from Petwerin. Oh, good cross there from Giddy. Good balance there from Giddy, just evading that return there from Petwerin. Oh, big one two there from Petwerin. One of the things I'm a little bit concerned about Giddy is just how low her hands are mm. when she stands in centre ring. I mean, that is a fairly common thing from Chiang Mai fighters, though. I fought up there quite a lot. And they tend to keep their guards quite low mm. because they've got more of a kicking style up there. <coughs> she needs to be careful, especially against a Moy Bullock fighter, a forward aggressive walk forward fighter like Pet Warren. Oh, good body kick there from Giddy. And when the athlete catches it, it still scores. And it still does damage. Again, there's that catch from Petwarin, but it still scores. And great stalling technique from Giddy as well. And you can see the look on Petwarin's face. She's got nothing but bad intentions. As soon as she catches that kick, she just fires off that right hand with venom. Yeah, I would not want to meet her in a dark alley. No, she'd no. steal all my milk money. And I'm certainly not going down to Fairtex to Spara, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, it just has that fierce look of determination. Believe Thieves won by knockout a few times here at Fairtex Fight. The knockout wins get a 10,000 bob bonus as well. Nice straight punches there from Pepper. That is the end of our first round of our second bout here this morning. Our second female bout. Of course, Pepper in Fairtex taking on Jitty Sawsaw Chiang Mai. Let's go have a look at the replays. Catch the teeth to kick to punch there from Jitty. Nice work. Good display of balance. Then locking on. Then, of course, Pepper in returning the favor with some heavy, very heavy hands. And as I said before, nothing but bad intentions from the Fairtex corner. Just pure aggression. So her father there, Samkai, in the corner as well. Everin actually started that fair tax about two, three years ago. Her first fight in the gym itself. So we're coming into round two. And a lot of flexibility in the legs of Giddy. You see from this, the corner stretch. One of the things I, I fought before and one of the things I was always terrified of actually was the corner man stretching my leg too much. <laughs> I don't know why. There's a few things that always concern me. Falling over the ropes and getting stretched too much were my biggest fears. I mean, yes, I, I mean, different strokes for different folks, I suppose. <laughs> like. <laughs> You just got to confront your fears, man. You yeah. might want to start doing some yoga classes. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's that's a real sign. And Petwarin is not doing yoga on Jiddy. She's trying to bulldoze through her. That was a very nice transition. <laughs> yeah. Just like the transitions here in the clinch. As it looks like Petwarin is about to take the back, but nice stall there from Jiddy. We've seen that stall a few times from Giddy, and it's a pretty classic stall. I assume she's going to try for it again here. Oh, look like Ooh. that big knee there from Petwarin really took the gas out of Giddy. Uh, There's a nice stall from Giddy, just lifting the leg up onto Petwarin. She's getting steamrolled here. The bulldozing effect of the Moy Bullock. She just looks that little bit more physically stronger as well. She's just muscling her around a little bit more. 
I know this was a bigger weight cut than normal for Pat Rorin, who is continuing to grow. I think this will be her last bout at this weight. Oh, following yeah. up with that elbow. Oh, yeah. And the appropriate stoppage there from the referee. Absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic call there by the referee to protect our athletes. You know, safety is our number one priority here at Fairtex. And here we see the replays, and it was one way traffic. You, and I think the real sign for the referee was when Diddy dropped her hands. You see the referee very close to the action, and then when Kitty dropped her hand, that was a, a clear sign for the referee to stop the fight. Oh, great knees there from Pet Warren. She'll get the 10,000 bot bonus from Fairtex Equipment for her TKO win. Ladies and gentlemen, in round number two, we have a winner by a technical knockout in the red corner, Pet Warren Fairtex. Let's go to the CEO Fairtex fight. Mob bonus jack, Fairtex equipment, 1,000,000 baht. Congratulations to Pet Warren Fairtex picking up that knockout bonus of 10,000 baht from Fairtex equipment. Join us after the break as a fighter from Brazil takes on a fighter from Thailand at 70 kilograms. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fairtex Fight Poi Man Pan Extreme here at the iconic Bloombini Stadium on Channel 7 HD. Time to two first fight. The second fight is Petwarin Fairtex, who won TKO. We have a bonus of 1,000 baht from Fairtex Equipment. We now move on to the third bout of the day. Let's bring out in the black corner, Antonio Marcos. So here we go into our third bout of the day and looking very, very fierce. We have Antonio Marcos walking into the ring, 42 years young. Standing at 170 centimeters and looking fit, fit, fit. 12 bouts to his record, eight wins, three losses, one draw. I am personally inspired by Antonio. I'm 41 myself, so it's great to see someone my age fighting regularly. Of course, as you get older, it becomes more difficult just more responsibilities and the body slows down as well. But Antonio looking fit as a fiddle here. 
And that's exactly why we're sitting in the commentary box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's had a, a few less donuts than me. <laughs> and our professional comment team just going over the final touches, a little Vaseline there from Paco. Of course, today's show brought to you by Channel 7 HD and Taro Entertainment, our official partners and our sponsor, Samo T and Ute Sport Gear. And in the red corner, Win Fatax. Again, representing Fairtex Training Center in Pattaya, Thailand, is Win Fairtex. At age 27, Win stands at 170 centimeters with a fight record of 61 fights, 51 wins, eight losses, and two draws. What can you tell us about Win? Win is a very, very talented. Muay Thai fighter, a technical fighter. He had an incredible head KO win, head knockout win, not, maybe three or four months ago. Probably a bit more fit for the classic stadiums than these entertainment shows. But very, very technical, a good fighter, has fought a bunch of different shows uh, in terms of Thailand, Max Muay Thai, Thai fight, and of course, Fairtex fight. Time to rock up. Kuni Kuti San, the Tokane Rupa Muay Thai, we got Jet Zip Kilogram Sam Yok, Yokla Sam Nati. This is a Muay Thai bout at 70 kilograms, scheduled for three three minute rounds. Nak Muay Nai Mum Dam, fighting in the black corner. Nam Nak Jet Zip Kilogram Sung Roy Jet Zip. Weighing in at 70 kilograms, standing 170 centimeters tall. Majak Pradhet Brazil. From Brazil, this is Antonio Marcos. And his opponent, fighting in the red corner. Namnak Jetzip Kilogram Sung Roy Jetzip. Weighing in at 70 kilograms, standing 170 centimeters tall. Majak Pradhetai from Thailand. This is Win Fertex. And your referee, Nayamon Thai Wisung Le. Here we go with the tail of the tape. Win Fertex takes on Antonio Marcus. Thailand versus Brazil. Great to see international matchups. We see, already seen Singapore versus Thailand, Thailand versus Thailand, and now Thailand versus Brazil. One of the things I personally like about Fairtex is the international quality of the matchups. They will have foreigners versus foreigners and foreigners versus Thais. And we'll see how this plays out. A bit of unorthodox energy there from Antonio. Yeah, very, very jittery. And trying to hammer away here at Wynn, who has great balance here. And blocking that leg kick as well. Big swinging overhands from Antonio. Oh, cracking body kick there from Wynn. And I think this could set the theme for this fight is just Wynn trying to time that kick. That was uh, was pretty pretty thunderous, that kick. And just needs to be careful when Antonio does catch a kick. I'm a little surprised that Wynn doesn't target the legs as well. There it is. Just the way Antonio is standing, that low, almost squat lunge. His stance is very wide. He's very heavy on that front foot. And into the clinch here. So, Wynn just testing him out there in the clinch. Oh, good leg kick there from Antonio. Cracking kick there from Wynn, replying the fader. And again, the second 
body kick there from Wynn. I think he is feeling a little bit of destruction in the ribs. Oh! Ow! When coming in for the kill already. And if my crystal ball has anything, I think we could see a stoppage early on. I think those kicks are pretty damaging. Yeah. I think, I predict a, a right body kick knockout. That's that's what I was thinking myself. We'll see what happens. You know, I'm 110% right about 23% of the time, I believe. Oh, your statistics are growing every week, man. <laughs> <laughs> the percentages are getting higher. I like it. I like it. Well, I'm more and more correct every week, so that's why it's going up to 110%. Oh, oh cracking <laughs> body kick. Oh, I would not want to be on the yeah. receiving end of that. And it's only the first round. This is, I think, big trouble for Antonio. Oh, big body shot. And you see him wincing. There's the right kick. As Antonio sits on the back foot. I think the wind's growing in confidence here. You can see how damaging those body shots and kicks were. So dying second to the first round here. Just wind just biding his time. That is the end of the first round. So fairly interesting first round there. Uh, Antonio had a fairly heavy wide stance allowing Wynn to capitalize on that and throw some of those thunderous body kicks but of course Wynn had to be careful because Antonio was catching a lot of those kicks and trying to hammer down with some of those elbows we just saw a second ago would you take away from some of these replays Matt you can see it in the replays just when dominating the fight, especially with the big body shots, very good at picking his shots here. I do think Antonio is dangerous. He has a puncher's chance, and he's putting everything he's got into his heavy hands. And you just saw Antonio got a little bit of a warning from the referee there in the corner for grabbing for too long. When the... When the athletes grab the kick, they need to attack right away. They can't be walking back and forward. You're only allowed two steps. So here we are, ready for round two. So will our crystal balls be correct? Will we see a stoppage via those big body kicks? Oh, big swinging hand there from Antonio. Oh, beautiful elbows there from Wynn. And cracking that right body kick again. I think Antonio is feeling that burst of energy after a break, which tends to dissipate after about 30 seconds to a minute. Oh, and big swing there from Antonio. Big overhand right, swinging for the fences. Throwing everything but the kitchen sink here this morning. Straight right to the body there from Antonio. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen any bruising on the ribs of Antonio so far. And if anybody's interested in influencer boxing, he, his big overhand right reminds me of KSI a bit. <laughs> <laughs> bit oh, a there is a little bit of reddening on the ribs of Antonio now. There's a bit of uh, blood pouring from his eye, too. I think one of those, oh! those big elbows slipped through. Yeah, that was a beautiful elbow there from Wynn. Yeah, it's definitely bleeding on the inside of his eye there. Yeah, and his, his footwork is looking a bit wobbly now. He's definitely tired, that's yeah. for sure. Oh, he's not looking good here. And you see the referee's eyes are on him now. Usually, ooh, wow. So I definitely feel a stoppage is coming very soon. Yep. Is it going to be that right body kick? Well, that was a bit telegraphed, that one. I, I could see that one coming. Yeah, 
think the mail came all the way from Antarctica. Oh, Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> I think it's just a matter of time here before Wind stops Antonio. Yeah, Wind's, Wind's just picking him apart at this point. There's that right body kick. Oh, nice teep. Nice time teep there from Antonio. He's still in it. Oh, big head kick. He's def definitely got a tough chin on him. Yeah, looked up at the clock there and then looked at the referee almost as if he was asking to be saved. There, the referee warning him about plowing. I think it's the exact term is Radna. He's shaking. Shake oh! oh! Well, it was the right side, and it was the right elbow. Oh! He's holding himself up by the ropes. Go! Hip! Yeah, and I think a correct call there from the referee to end the fight. Unfortunately, an incorrect call on what the finishing shot was. I said right body kick, it was the right elbow. Now I am 110% correct about 22% of the time. Here's some of the replays. Big hands, there's that elbow, boom, right to the ground. I think he wasn't sure if he was in Rio de Janeiro in, or Antarctica. Just felt like a tree. So a strong win there from Wynn, living up to his name, bang, and down. Ladies and gentlemen, in round number two, we have a winner by a technical knockout. In the red corner, Win. เอ่อแอคคอร์ดินเทนคุณเพรมนะครับซีอีโอเฟเท็กซ์อุควิปเมนต์ 55 kg. Join us after the break with the next bout. A fighter from Lao takes on a fighter from Thailand at 55 kg. See you then. Vertex fight, Wei Man Pan Extreme. Gentlemen, welcome back to Fairtex Fight, Moe Man Pan Extreme here on Channel 7 HD. Pan 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 So entering the ring now, Pet Nam Kong, Mong Kong Pet from Lao. Oh, and a <laughs> awesome walk in there from Pet Nam Kong. The 19 year old stands at 173 centimeters, 55 bouts to his record, 49 wins, 5 losses, 1 draw. 
That's something I haven't seen before. That must be a traditional Lao uh, dance from where he's from. That that, that was pretty interesting. I, I... Yeah, it was pretty cool. Obviously, a lot of the athletes traditionally would do the Y Crew Ram Moy, but that is not happening as much anymore as we shift into a more entertainment aspect of the sport. So love the athletes are warming up or showing their personality in the walkouts. We see it with athletes like Stamp Fairtex, who obviously has to stamp dance before her fights and other athletes. I know there's some athletes over on One Lumpini that have pretty interesting walkouts. And Oh, it looks like the athletes foot was taped up so we'll have to remove that it's considered an unfair advantage just again take a moment or two to remove all the tape from the foot he potentially had a a sprain or an injury there It looks like they used the boxing glove tape to secure it. It's pretty heavy, thick duct tape. That's a pretty heavy duty job on that yeah. one. <laughs> he, you know, we'll, we'll see how that plays out in the ring. It's great work from the inspectors to notice that and immediately act on it, though. The inspectors here, the corner men, just making sure everything is, thing is legit and fair all the time. Fairtex fight is run according to international standards. So we have a supervised cut man that wrap the hands. And I think, yeah, I think it is smart and appropriate to put the anklet back on because the stickiness of that tape might actually adhere to the opponent's skin. That's that's right. Yeah, yeah. It would, it would call, cause abrasions. Yeah, it would unnecessary cause abrasions, abrasions. Or, or it would tear at the skin. Normally, the athletes do not wear anklets here at Fairtex Fight. So I do think it, it's smart of the cornermen to allow the anklet just to make things more fair. And you see a, a look of annoyance on cornerman Paco's face. Former fighter himself, love our cornermen and staff have fought or been in the fight game before. And red corner, let's bring out Basel Tai Thomasi. Coming into the red corner, representing Thailand is Fasul Tai Thomasi. At age 23, Fasul Tai stands at 165 centimeters with a fight record of 60 fights, 40 wins, 18 losses, and two draws. Of course, we've seen Fasul Tai fight here before. A regular customer here at Fairtex Fight. So I'm excited to see him fight again. Or more Siri, a very, very good gym. It used to have Avatar Tor more Siri, who now moved over to PK Sanchai. I think Avatar originally from Tor more Siri. Avatar, a fun fighter on the one Lumpini circuit. Oh, a lot of times, what happens with athletes is they'll start at one gym and then their contract will be bought by a bigger gym or be transferred very similar to the way athletes in football or basketball will be drafted and or the the contracts will be bought out they shift over to different gyms slash different gym uh, teams we turn it over to mark abbott 
55กิโลกรัม3ยกยกละ3นาที This is a Muay Thai bout at 55 kilograms scheduled for three three-minute rounds. นักมวยในมุมดำ fighting in the black corner น้ำหนัก55กิโลกรัมสูง173 weighing in at 55 kilograms standing 173 centimeters tall มาจากประเทศลาว from Lào this is เป็ดน้ำขงมงคลเพแล้วคู่ต่อสู้ของเขาในมุมแดง and his opponent fighting in the red corner น้ำหนัก55กิโลกรัมสูง165 weighing in at 55 kilograms standing 165 centimeters tall มาจากประเทศไทย from Thailand this is ฟาสุดใสต่อมอซี And here we have the tail of the tip, Pha Sot Sai Tor Mo Siri versus Pet Nam Kong Mong Kong Pet from Lao. So Thailand versus Lao for this one should be interesting to see how this one plays out. And we'll see if Pet Nam Kong is nervous at all. Obviously, that rear leg might be damaged or the ankle. He had it pretty tightly taped up. And you see Fa Sat Sai attacking that rear leg. South Pa versus Orthodox. Ooh. That lead leg kick, very, very strong from the Thai athlete in the red corner. Big teat there from Fasa Thai, just measuring the distance with that jab. Putting the hand out. Nice long guard there from Fasa Thai. Ooh, great high body kick there from Pet Nam Kong, who's definitely the taller of the two. Obviously, that left kick from or the right kick, rather, from Pet Nam Kong is going to be his primary weapon against the southpaw. And he's got a target to go in for for that inside leg. <laughs> yeah, he's got a little was. tattoo of Dorimond in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great work there from Fasat side to mix things up. High kick there from Pet Nam Kong. Ooh. Oh, skip in, rear hand. Beautiful work there from... Pet Nam Kong. No love lost so far from either of these two. Just the first round and explosive power from both of these athletes. Very good fight so far. Nice lead uppercut there from Farsa Thai, mixing it up to the rear hand. Beautiful work. I would say that the quality of the matchups at Fairtex fight is increasing and growing. The skill of the athletes and then the quality of the matchups in terms of how their match is going very, very well. The show, of course, has been running for about a year, year and a half now, a year and eight or nine months. So a real cadence to the show now. It's my nine month anniversary being on here. So I'm very lucky to be privileged enough to call the fights here at Fairtex Fight. Alongside Matt Lucas. Oh, good knee there from Farsat Tai. Beautiful rear elbow there from Farsat Tai, just on the end of that exchange. I do like these high kicks from Pet Nam Kong. Trying to leap into that inside leg kick there from Farsat Tai. Beautifully timed tape as well, just throwing him off balance. It's definitely experience. You look at the way he just pops out that lead hand measuring the distance to lead up with the kick beautiful work there from fast tie good fundamentals last few seconds blistering body kick there from pet nam kong so very explosive round there from pet nam kong and fast tie lao taking on thailand so let's go have a look at some of the action replays. Is that explosive kick there from Pet Nam Kong.
fast with Ty trying to take out the rear leg there. Nice elbow work there from Faso Tsai. So what'd you take away from that first round, oh, Oracle? <laughs> oh, Oracle. I think uh, my one prediction was off already, so I, I feel like I shouldn't be making that many more judgments of the future. Okay, all right. So we won't be looking to the stars this morning. One of the great things about Muay Thai is how unpredictable it can be. But this is a very good style matchup. Yeah, I would agree. I'm very impressed by Vietnam Gong. Ooh. Ooh. And Vietnam Gong actually took off that anklet. Oh, just off balance there. Heavy hands coming in from the red corner. Pitnam Kong, ooh, eating a big leg kick there from Farsatai. Big elbow as well there from Farsatai. Eating his own to give a little. Going to take a little to give a little there from Farsatai. Catching the tape. <laughs> Setting up for that rear leg kick there from Farsatai. Both fighters into the clinch now. Oh, inside elbow. Farsatai. Surprisingly, nobody's been cut yet. Mm. And the elbows are coming in thick and fast. Oh, Ooh. skip in. Big yeah. elbow there for Farsatai. I think that might have rocked Petnam Kong a little bit. Just looked a little glassy-eyed for a moment. Yeah, he's looking a little bit wobbly there. Big palm over the face there from Farsatai, disrupting Petnam Kong's breathing. Straight to the body, inside the clinch again. Ooh, required back with the lead elbow Ooh. from catching that tip. Oh, a beautiful stabbing Ooh. knees. These are, may just end it. Oh, 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 and caught him in the head as he was going down. Perfect knees there from Pennam Kong. What a stop it. I did not see that coming at all. And for me, that was perfect from Pennam Kong. Once he saw a weapon was working, he just went for it. This, I talk to a lot of athletes at corner. When you have something that is working, you need to go after it like you have rabies. There's that knee, bang! You see him crumbling, and then he goes for it again, again, and the body bent over, four, five, and then six, just for good measure. One, two, three, four knees to the body, five knees to the body. And six to the head. One more knees and Count Dracula could count. Boom. Bang. Phenomenal comeback there by Petnam Kong. I, I thought Petnam Kong was going to fade, but wow, look at that. What a great comeback. And, you know, really capitalizing on those knees there. He saw it, he took it, and went for it. What a performance. Ladies and gentlemen, in round number two, we have a winner by a knockout in the black corner. Petnam Kong Mong Kong Pek. And the Prem Hap CEO, Fairtex Fight. Mob bonus jack, Fairtex Equipment. 1,000 baht. A fantastic use of the knees to finish the fight. Picking up that 10,000 mark bonus from Fairtex Equipment. We're going to go to the next one. The next one is going to be Muay Thai. We've got 58 kilograms. Join us after the break with some more Muay Thai action at 58 kilograms. Fairtex Fight. Muay Man Pan Extreme. All right.
and gentlemen, welcome back to Fatex Fight Boy Man Pan Extreme. ใน4คู่ที่ผ่านมาคู่ที่2 3และ4มีน็อกและผู้ชนะได้รับโบนัสจาก Fatex Equipment 1,000 บาท Of the four bouts we've just been passed, bouts number two, three, and four, we had a win by knockout with all three of the winners picking up that bonus of 10,000 baht from Fairtex Equipment. We now move to the fifth bout of the day. Let's bring out the fighter in the black corner, Atsawadheb Sid Mwundit. So here we go into the next bout, Atsawadheb Sid Mwundit. Standing 185 centimeters. He's got a record of 81 bouts, 61 wins, 20 losses. And I believe we've seen Atsawadheb here before. Maybe a month, a month and a half ago? Yeah, I think that's correct. We've, we've definitely seen him fight here before. I remember him being a really lengthy fighter, had some pretty dangerous knees. It's one of the hard things about commentating is you watch so many fights, it's hard to remember who's who. I mean, but it's good. Um, Atsawatep has some pretty dangerous knees. I remember him being pretty good at clinching as well. So, excited to see what he brings here this morning. He's a fairly lengthy fighter too, standing at 185 centimeters. Very tall. He's taller than me, that's for sure. <laughs> Just getting the last minute bit of Vaseline before he jumps over the ropes. So here we are coming into the red corner is Chok Preacher PK Sanchai Muay Thai Gym hailing from the famous PK Sanchai Gym over there in Klong Toi, I think. Yeah, Klong Toi, which is a sort of a borough or area of Bangkok. So Bangkok is made up of different sections, of course. We're, right now, we're in northern Bangkok. I would say this is almost Don Muang area. Then I live in Hoi Kuang, which is center city. Joe lives over in Lad Prao. Oh, Suti San. Yeah. Kuang Doi is mid, mid Bangkok, a little south. It's very working class, a lot of industrial shops, a lot of motorbikes and the factories down there. Then, of course, you have other districts like Sukhumwe, uh, Silom, Lumpini, etc., etc. Same as New York City has Manhattan, Harlem, Queens, uh, Man Brooklyn. That's right. And, of course, Chuck Preacher coming in with a fight record of 150 fights, 100 wins, 30 losses, and 20 draws. This is a Muay Thai bout at 58 kilograms, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Namuay Nay Mumdam fighting in the black corner. Namnak 58 kilograms, 173. Weighing in at 58 kilograms, standing 173 centimeters tall. Maja Pratetai from Thailand. This is Aswat Heb. Sit. And his opponent fighting in the red corner. Namnak, 58 kilograms, 168. Weighing in at 58 kilograms, standing 161 centimeters tall. Majak Pratetai, also from Thailand. This is Chopricha PK Senchai Muay Thai Gym. Your referee, Jasip Three, Anukun Tam Silam. Here we go with the tell of the tape Chalk Bricha, PK Sin Chai versus Atsawatep Sip Mutnit. PK Sin Chai, a very, very good gym. 
located, as Joe was saying, in Klong Doi, not super far from Lumpini Park and Siloam. They, of course, have Tawan Chai, P.K. Sanchai there, along with other famed athletes. Monchalong, <laughs> one of my favorites. A yeah, very funny character, Wanchalong. And Southpaw versus Orthodox again. Ooh, Chopridge are coming out very aggressively here in the first round. Straight out of the gates, trying to hack at the legs. Oh, that's our tip. Oh, big, dangerous cross there from Chopridge. And again, if we talk about styles, we're seeing Chuck Brita with a Moy Mott style. That frame is thick and a bit low, so he'll come in heavy with the hands and leg kicks. Try and take out that lead leg of Atsawatep. He's doing a pretty good job because you can already see Atsawatep looking a little bit tense on that, that front foot. And Atsawatep, more of a Muay Thamu fighter so far, a Muay Day, a technical fighter or a kicking fighter. Doing a great job controlling the distance. Just trying to mitigate some of that forward pressure and hacking leg kicks there from Chopricha. See, Chopric are just continuing to push forward. Not, not aggressively, just edging, trying to pick his moments. Oh. Bit of a stumble into the back there. Not really taking the back, but just a bit of a wobble. Nice elbow there from Atsawatep. I think that's the strategy Atsawatep's going to need to employ. Is sit on the back foot, but explode into his attacks. Try and counter. Just being very careful at the moment. Oh, big swing punches there from Chukrita. And Atsawatap definitely has the advantage in the clinch. Just taller athletes have a better frame and get better leverage. With a body lock there to stall. Ooh, beautiful exploding step in knee there from Atsawatep. Atsawatep just trying to pick his shots very carefully as he explodes into them. Oh, oh. kick there from Atsawatep. Very, very dangerous. He's doing a great job controlling Takrita. It can be quite hard to control boy map fighters like that. You've got to pick your shots very carefully and sit on the back foot and mitigate that forward distance. So let's go and have a look at the replays. There's those hacking leg kicks there from Chok Pritchard to continue the forward aggression throughout that round, but... And Sowatep just doing a fantastic job of mitigating that pressure by sitting on the back foot and applying his own attacks by exploding into them. Disrupting the rhythm of Chokrita. Picking his shots very carefully. Very high level IQ there by Atsawatep. So we'll go and see what round two brings us. We just see the quartermen applying some of the ice to those legs there of Atsawatep from Chokrich's thundering leg kicks that we saw. So here we are coming into round two. Again, the high kick from Atsawatep. It's amazing how much you can explode into these attacks. Ooh, big hands there from Chokrucha. 
There's that dangerous knee to the body we saw with the last fight. I think Chokrich has been told by his corner to not give Atsawatep any room to breathe, just stay on him. And you see Chokrich firing himself up all the time, punching his gloves together. And it might end up being difficult for Atsawatep to con continue to control the game here with the pressure of Chakrita. Great body punch there from the blue corner, or if red I, corner. If I was in the red corner, I'd be, be telling Chakrita to go to the body. It just looked like some of those body shots there really caused havoc for Atsawatep. He was wincing really hard. I'll be going up top, straight to the body. Oh, there's that long knee attempt from Atsawatep. Atsawatep, still a tough customer, though. I see he's got a very mm. high long guard. He's afraid of some of those hooks. He's keeping it on the back foot. Gonna dig the head down underneath the chin there from Atsawatep. Applying that palm over, disrupt the breathing. Yeah, great move there from Atsawatep. Chop Preacher on the march forward. And great framing of the arms from Atsawatep. There, Chuck Richard trying to get the body lock. Chuck Richard's corner telling him, guy, 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 get closer, get closer. Oh, big rear hand straight on the button of Utsawatep's face, following up with the elbow to knee. It looks like it could be trouble for the lengthy Utsawatep. He's got a look of concern on his face. And you can see Chopric's corner looking up at the clock. Oh, oh, beautiful knee. Giving it his own there. And you saw him try to make space for a subsequent knee. Fighting for control there. About 13 seconds to go. Oh, doubling out with that knee there. Holding on, holding on. Trying to run down the seconds. Not giving Chokricha any room to fire off. What a fantastic second round there. So we'll go and have a look at some of the replays. And Joe, do you have this one going either way? Oh, it's a bit hard to tell at the moment. I mean, earlier on in the round, I was probably going Chokricha's way. But just then, just on some of those... The replies from Asawatep, those vicious knees. I just, I, it's pretty even in my books at the moment. What are you What are you saying? I think Asawatep might have won that last round. Again, it's it's pretty even, and I definitely am enjoying this matchup. Oh, it's a great fight, fantastic, and it's stylistically. It's a really cool fight to watch, considering the height of Atsawatep, but the stockiness of Chokricha. I mean, it's a pretty, like, how do I frame this? It's a pretty standardized fight, considering the frames of both these athletes. Chokricha being a Moy Mat fighter, and Atsawatep sitting on that back foot using his length to mitigate that forward pressure. It's fantastic to see. It, it's stylistically a very beautiful fight in my eyes. So coming into round three now. And a very, very fast start from both. Ooh, beautiful rear hand from Atsawatep. And you see Atsawatep using his chin on Chokrita. It's those small little tactics that can make a larger strategic difference. And again, that glove across the face 
Nice rear teep there from Atawatep. Though eating some big leather there from Chokrichar. Taking him to the corner. Looking up at the clock there. He might be starting to fade a bit there. Stepping in, arm across. Chokrichar nearly taking the back there. Big rear teep. Stepping in with that knee. It's hard to get that arm control when your opponent has you looped under the armpits. So we see Atsoatep trying to explode in on the back foot with that elbow again. Long range here from Atsawatab. Oh, good short body punch there from Chakbrita, though. And you see a look of concern on Chakbrita's corner. I believe Fa. Doubling up on the knee there from Chakbrita. <laughs> and you hear a very excited crowd behind us. <laughs> Very involved there. Knee for knee here at the moment in the clinch. Oh, nearly taking the back there. There's a cut on Atsawatep's eyebrow now. Yeah, only 30 seconds left. I don't think it will be an issue. But you see Takri Chab wanting to end it. Oh, I think if it... If the fight was more than 20 seconds, it would be an issue. Both fighters battling it out in the closing seconds, looking more hungry than each other. Trying to show the judges who comes out stronger at the end of this round. And that elbow might have been a... And there is blood absolutely raining from Atsawatep's face. That might have been a decisive moment in the fight for Chakri Chow. Just getting that cut, doing that extra damage. Here's some of the highlights. In the immortal words of Doja Cat, he's painting it red. <laughs> uh. Oh. So there's that cut. The blood running away from the eye, but it's pr a pretty substantial cut in terms of length. So we go to the judges scorecard. of all three rounds we go to the judges scorecards the judges score this bout 29 28 28 29 and 29 28 you should go you should bad you should bad you should go let you should go you should bad for the winner price split decision in the red corner chocolate chap pk sentai muay thai gym Wow, what an incredible fight leg kan tang te yok ti 1 pai theng pai yok ti 3 ni na hap yang ka pen ku e ka hap Ladies and gentlemen that was such an amazing fight don't go anywhere we still have our main event coming up เอาจะพักกันสักครู่กลับมากับคู่เอกของเราในวันนี้ครับ Topic of the Lev จากประเทศจอร์เจียปะทะอาปิสิทธ์แฟร์เท็กซ์จากประเทศไทย See you after the break with our main event
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fairtex Fight. Moi Man Pan Extreme here at the legendary Lumbini Stadium on Channel 7 HD. Samrakaidi Pun Man, Hap Pun Man, Han Ku E Kong Rao Leon Hap Nai Wan Nai. For those of you just joining us, you are in time for our main event. Muay Thai, 65 kilograms. Let's bring out the fighter in the black corner, Topic Ubdalel. So here we go with our main event of the day, and it's been a great lineup so far. I'm very excited to see this one. We have Topic, Topic from Georgia, the 29-year-old sitting at 168 centimeters, 27 bouts his record, 22 wins, five losses. So coming to us by way of Bazad Warrior Academy, from Georgia, I think this might be the first athlete I've seen from Georgia. Bazad, a great ambassador for the sport, bringing out a lot of athletes to Thailand. Paco putting on the last bit of Vaseline here. Hopping over the ropes. And in the red corner, Apisit, Flatex. This man needs no introduction. You should know this name, Apisit, Fairtex. The age of 35, Apisit stands at 170 centimeters with a fight record of 90 fights, 70 wins. 18 losses and two draws. He's famous for his heavy hands, he's hacking low kicks, ferocious elbows. We saw him with a bit of a viral video not long ago where he took on an Iranian athlete and cut him right on the chin with a big slicing elbow. Of course, Apisid being a Former Channel 7, was he a champion or was he just a just, a just a regular on the circuit? He was he was a regular on the circuit, but I've seen him fight in, live in Sydney. He stopped Singh Payak, a former Channel 7 champion with leg kicks in the first round, so a very tough customer. This is the main event. Kuwaitney one need to talk in the room back Muay Thai. We got. 65 kg 3 yok yok la 3 naati a muay thai bout at 65 kg scheduled for 3 3 minute rounds na muay nei mum dam fighting in the black corner nam nak 65 kg sung 168 weighing in at 65 kg standing 168 cm tall ma jak prathet georgia from georgia this is topic and his opponent fighting in the red corner. kilogram Weighing in at 65 kilograms, standing 170 centimeters tall. Maja Kratetai from Thailand. This is Absit Fertang. Your referee, Naibulert, Gail Bithak. The tell of the tip, Abhisit Fairtex versus Topic Abdul Nip from Georgia. So, Abhisit with a lot of experience. Here we go into round number one. The taller of the two as well, Apisit. 
Oh, and going in for that classic hook leg kick combination. Now, Appiset used to train down a Sitman try a very long time ago, so it's a pretty trademark style of that gym the heavy hands, the low kicks. Now, he actually trained when I was there, I think it was 11 years ago. Straight for the outside leg kick there. He's going to really try and stop Topic in his tracks with those leg kicks. And of course, Topic on the retreat now. Just using some good footwork to stay on the back foot. Mm. Yeah, fast punches here from the fighter from Georgia. Nice left high kick there from Topic. And you see Abise very much on the hunt here. He wants that KO bonus. So a lot of times, even when the athlete isn't really doing that much, this sort of hunting gesture, this hunting sort of atmosphere can collapse a fighter that does not have a strong mindset. This, oh, big right hand there from Apisa. But I feel the fighter from Georgia is doing very well for himself. He's been scoring more in terms of points for me. Obviously just trying to find his shot. Yeah, hasn't quite figured out his range yet, Abi said. Oh, there's that big right hand. And he's trying to push Topic into the pocket where he wants him and offload. Topic doing a good job with his lateral movement. And sometimes Abi said looks like he's maybe chasing him a bit much rather than cutting off the ring. What do you think, Joe? I would agree with that. He's just trying to stick on to him a little bit too much. Oh, big jumping knee. Definitely one for the highlight reel. Just stay, stay and stick it in, sticking to him like glue. And the clinch here. Good lock there from Apisib. But the fighter from Georgia, more active. And again, Apisib almost chasing him down. Feel like he hasn't quite caught him yet, though. And he's just looking for that shot that's going to put him down. I feel like Abise needs to attack the legs, attack the mobility of his opponent, rather than just straight running after him. Fighter from, the fighter from Georgia, Topic, doing a fantastic job of using lateral movement to move away out of the range of Apisid and picking him off from the back foot. Pretty smart strategy in my eyes. Yeah. You don't want to... I like this jumping knee. Bang! Classic. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I think it's a pretty smart strategy to keep doing that just pick him off from the distance. Don't stand there and trade with up. Is it, that's the last thing you want to do in a fight, is stand there square and trade with a monster like Apisid. Stay on the back foot, use lateral movement, pick him off with kicks, punches, rack up the points. Don't try and stand there and knock him out. It's not gonna work. The man has a granite chin and concrete for hands. So Topic doing a good job there in the first round, I thought. Yeah, smart strategy from him. We'll see how things progress here in the second round. Oh, good body kick there. Oh, an excellent leg kick as well from Apisit. Strong left hand. We're seeing more scoring shots already from Apisit. And the hunt is on. Short elbow there from Apisit. The stall there from Topic. And a little bit of a rub in the face of the glove from Apisit, showing his experience. Oh, big elbow 
goal there from Abise. Topic doesn't know quite where he is. Looking relatively composed, but how composed will he be as Abise comes in for the kill? Oh, big elbow again. And Abise has tons of time to finish this. He just looked up at uh, the clock. He has two minutes, two knockdowns already. Topic is going to be on very, very shaky legs here. Can he finish it early? I think it's just a matter of time here. Big elbow. Oh! oh. And that's him down for the finish. <laughs> And Abisit walks out, 10,000 baht richer. That yeah, great knockout win for Abisit. So here we'll get to see the three knockdowns. He Abisit just started off way, way better in that second round. Everything firing. There's a two scorching elbows. Then that next knockdown. This right across the nose. The final onslaught just Topic couldn't take it anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, in round number two, we have a winner by a knockout in the red corner. Happy sit. Fatex! Let's go to the Premier CEO Fatex Fight. My bonus from Fatex Equipment. 1,000 baht! Congratulations to Apisit Fatex winning by knockout in round two and then picking up that knockout bonus of 10,000 baht from Fatex Equipment. ท่านผู้ชมครับอย่าลืมว่าเรายังมีอีกครับ Don't don't forget to join us after the break we still have one more bout lined up for you a fighter from Greece and a fighter from Thailand at 57 kilograms see you then Vertex fight Muimun Pan Extreme
Here we go with the tail of the tape for our last bout of the day. Mung Paklek or Dick Pak versus Arash Shafari. So Thailand versus Greece for this last one. Ooh, and starting off to a robust start. Big kicks here from Mung Paklek. The south pool taking out a rush. A rush coming out with some very leaping explosiveness there. Yeah, jumping Ooh. across the ring. Greece, of course, has a lot of kickboxing history. Yeah, he's got that very European kickboxing style. And Mung Pak like looking to land those big body kicks. Oh! Right on the button. Looking a bit wobbly there, like Popeye. Yeah. Bit of sea legs there from Arash, I think. Get back. He's back in it. And there might be another bonus given away from Fairtex Equipment. Mungpak Lek on the hunt now. Oh, and caught him with that cross. Oh, almost kicked off his head. Slugging it out here. <laughs> it is a bit of a slug fest at the moment. Oh, oh big kick, oh. Big oh. Oh. oh, big. That is, I think that is all she wrote. Oh, no. He's back in it. Yeah. Back. And that is an appropriate call by the yeah. referee. So a very, very fast finish to our final bout of the day. And thank you so much for tuning in. We're here every Saturday, 10 to 12 Thai time. Fairtex Fight. You can follow us on Instagram as well, Fairtex Fight. Thank you so much to our sponsors, Samo T and Newt Sports Care. And of course, our official partners, Channel 7 and Taro HD. We'll turn it over to Mark Abbott in just a moment for the final decision. In the meantime, some of the replays of that very, very fast fight, Mung Paklek just taking Arash apart with those body kicks. Hit him right on the button with that cross. Then a quick, quick finish with the knees. Bang. Wallop <laughs> to the ground. Oh. And I am Matt Lucas, commentating alongside of me. Joe Comerford. Thank you so much for tuning in. There's that big elbow finish. And tune in next week. Next week we have the Road to One, or in two weeks' time, rather, we have the Road to One series finale. Very excited for that. Ladies and gentlemen, in round number one, we have a winner by a technical knockout in the red corner, Mung Pak Lek Sodek Pak! And I'm going to CEO of Fairtex Fight, Kun Prem, to give a bonus from Fairtex Equipment, 1,000,000 baht! Congratulations to Mung Pak Lek there, picking up the knockout bonus of 10,000 baht from Fairtex Equipment. Kun Prem, you won't wait here, Kapo, man. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. จะถามนะครับว่าที่ผ่านมาเขาชกนวมใหญ่ครับ Road to One 
ียมตัวเตรียมพร้อมแล้วก็ทั้งหมดเนี่ยจะต่อยกัน5ยกด้วยกันแล้วการที่จะชกโนมใหญ่กับโนมเล็กมันแตกต่างกันยังไงครับโอ้แตกต่างกันเยอะแน่นอนนะครับไม่ว่าจะเป็นการป้องกันตัวการออกหมัดการที่มีฟุตเวิร์กอะไรเนี่ยผมคิดว่าเกมมันจะเปลี่ยนไปได้แน่นอนคนที่อาจจะเป็นมวยต่อเนี่ยอาจจะเป็นมวยรองได้นะครับเพราะมันเป็นสิ่งสําคัญครับที่นักกีฬาเนี่ยต้องฝึกโนมเล็กแล้วนะครับแล้วมีอะไรจะฝากถึงแฟนมวยครับเรื่องของโรทัวร์ไทยแลนด์ซีซั่นสองครับก็สำหรับโรทัวร์นะครับเราก็มาถึงวีคสุดท้ายของวันที่27ตุลาคมนะครับก็นักกีฬาแน่นอน3คนก็จะได้เห็นเขาในเวทีวันลุมพินีหรือว่าวันแชมเปี้ยนชิพอย่างแน่นอนครับยังไงก็นี่เป็นซีซั่น2แล้วเราก็จะทำซีซั่น3ซีซั่น4เพื่อให้โอกาสกับนักกีฬาเด็กๆเนี่ยได้มีโอกาสกับมาต่อยกับเวทีใหญ่ๆนะครับคืออย่างแฟร์เทคไฟเนี่ยเราอยากจะสร้างนักกีฬาจากรากหญ้าจากเด็กที่ไม่มีโอกาสให้มีโอกาสจริงๆและความฝันของเขาจะเป็นจริงครับเยี่ยมขอบคุณมากครับคุณเพลงครับนี่แหละครับอยากจะให้ติดตามแฟร์เทคไฟนะครับนักชกก็จะมาที่นี่นะครับแล้วก็จะไปที่โรดทูวันต่อหลังจากนั้นก็ไปที่รายการใหญ่ๆอย่างวันลุมพินีและวันแชมเปี้ยนชิพครับ Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for joining us. Before we go, I'd like to thank our sponsors: c h o n g j e t HD, t e r o Entertainment, f a t e x สนามวยลุมพินียุทธสปอร์ตเกียร์และเวเบตราตุกแก From me, Mark, up with the team here at f a t e x Channel 7 HD, Lumpini Stadium. We'll see you next week. สวัสดีครับ